the case regarding Roe versus Wade is now in. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is the th this is the case that involves Roe v. Wade, established 49 years ago. The decision is out. It's been issued by Justice Alito, and Roe v. Wade, according to our reports from the U.S. Supreme Court and our own Shannon Bream, is that Roe v. Wade has been overturned, mm -hmm. and the question of abortion has been returned to the states. It's been 50 years since that landmark, uh, landmark Supreme Court ruling, and conservatives in government and in law have been working for 50 years to overturn it. And this is the live reaction now in real time outside the U.S. Supreme Court in our nation's capital. What you're seeing there are people who are uh, overjoyed about the decision in, in this particular shot here. Um, and then you also have people who are obviously going to be dismayed about this. Uh, this uh, leak happened about 56 days ago or so, 55 days ago, and they've been waiting for this. We do have some uh, great team coverage for you. We believe, uh, Shannon Bream, are you available to us now? I am, and um, as you know, we now get these by computer. In the old days, we would get the hard copies and we would run them down the steps, but the initial first line of the read of the syllabus, which is not the actual opinion, but it is uh, the, the summary of the decision, it says that Roe and Casey are overruled. And the voting uh, that we thought was together, it looks like it has stayed together. Justice Alito has authored the opinion. He is joined by Justices Gorsuch, Kavanaugh, Thomas, and Barrett. There are a couple of concurrences. The one that we're most interested in is going to be the one by the Chief Justice. And we'll see what he had to write, because we've thought all along he would not be a vote to overturn Roe. Um, but that he would be somebody who might want to try to find some middle ground. That Mississippi law, which bans most abortions after 15 weeks, um, that he would essentially probably uphold that, but not want to go that extra step uh, for Roe. Um, and the court essentially says today that Roe and Casey are gone. Um, it says, we end this opinion where we began. Abortion prevents a, pr presents a profound moral question. The Constitution does not prohibit the citizens of each state from regulating or prohibiting abortion. Roe and Casey arrogated that authority. We now overrule those decisions and return that authority to the people and their elected representatives. The judgment of the Fifth Circuit reversed and remanded for further proceedings. So Roe and Casey, officially, this vote is out. Mm -hmm. The votes are in. Once it's officially uh, out, you know, the leak, it was interesting, but it didn't lock these votes in. They're now officially in. And Roe and Casey, um, you can hear, I think, a lot of the pro-life groups that are out there uh, behind us at the court. They've been fighting for this um, ever since Roe. And now yes. uh, this victory that many of them didn't think was going to be possible, some of them in their lifetimes. But based on these states that after Roe and in the, in the last couple of years have specifically passed laws they knew would go immediately to court, Mississippi was one of those. Many of the lawmakers involved said our ideal in this is to get this to the court to challenge Roe. They knew it wouldn't stand up against initial challenges or that it would be immediately in court. And so something that started a couple years ago in the state legislature has now made it here to the Supreme Court and has done what they hope to do, which is dismantle Roe v. Casey in a five to four vote. And uh, we'll look at the chief's uh, concurrence, too, to see what his language on this is. We never thought he was part of the... Um, of the majority, those five votes to put this together, but it'll be interesting exactly to see what he says on this. Um, but with that opinion uh, from Justice Alito, we'll see how tra how closely this tracks with the draft, but the bottom line doesn't change. Roe and Casey have been overruled. Shannon, reading two lines from the, the opinion here, quote, there is nothing in the Constitution about abortion and the Constitution does not implicitly protect the right. Here's another line. It is time to heed the Constitution and return the issue of abortion to the people's elected representatives, quoting from that opinion to the Supreme Court for how the reaction is happening now live. Yeah, and, and um, not surprising that the justices that are dissenting would stick together. We do have a couple of current concurrences. Justice Thomas wrote his own concurrence. Justice Kavanaugh did as well. And the chief is the one that we're going to want to look at. Um, but let me get to the dissent here and let's uh, let's see what they have to say because we know they've been very full-throated. There have been tensions at the court. Um, we've seen that in some of um, what has come out in other opinions recently, particularly from Justice Sotomayor, has had some language about the court being restless. Um, although she had very nice words to say about Justice Thomas not long ago, um, we know that there has been um, 
some distrust. We don't have the name of the leaker who originally gave us that opinion or gave it to Politico weeks ago. And so what we're left with is a lot of suspicion within the court. Um, we haven't had any updates on that leak investigation. And so we don't know how close the court is or is not uh, into finding that. Um, here we have Justice Breyer, Sotomayor, and Kagan all sign their name to the dissent. So instead of saying Justice Breyer writes or Justice Sotomayor uh, writes and they all, um, the others join, they have all three put their name on this dissent. Uh, and they talk about the fact that uh, women for nearly half a century have relied on Roe v. Wade. Um, the government could not control a woman's body or the course of her life. It could not determine what her future would be. Um, they say we get the divisiveness of this particular uh, of this particular issue. There's nothing else like it out there. But it says today the court discards balance. It says that from the very moment of fertilization, a woman has no rights to speak of. A state can force her to bring a pregnancy to term even at the steepest personal and familial costs. An abortion restriction the majority holds is permissible whenever rational, the lowest level of scrutiny known to the law. Clearly, those three have written a very spirited uh, dissent. And it's important to remember as well, states across the country have a, a lot of trigger laws that are going to kick in now from this decision, and they go to the extremes. And some states, it's going to be virtually impossible to get an abortion legally. And others, um, you know, I talked with Governor Jared Polis not long ago. Ca Colorado is essentially up until the moment of birth. They have nothing that stops you from having an abortion there. People may try Travel. Some of these states may become abortion sanctuaries. Uh, some of the states that have called themselves um, pro-life sanctuaries on the other side say, in this state, you won't be able to get an abortion. So this decision appears to confirm everything that we saw from that leak weeks ago. There's been a lot of back and forth about why the court didn't just get this out, because until we got this official opinion today, these votes were cast in stone. Uh, there was worry about these justices. We have somebody now charged with thinking about trying to assassinate Justice Kavanaugh. So today, it is official. The votes are locked okay. in. Uh, we have seven other opinions left, but I don't think anybody's too worried about those at this moment. We Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.